Hargese comes through to take it up from Marsborough. Salva on the far side. Storm Hart is back in fourth place in the maroon jacket. It's Cargazi from Marsborough. First and third at the Dublin Racing Festival. Then Salva and Storm Hart as they still approach the final flight. Cargazi and Danny Mullins. Marsborough on the far side. Mark Walsh. They're kicking away now from Salva. Here it is. The moment of truth. The final flight. Up and over. Marsborough far side. Came up well but went left. On the near side is the Philly Cargazi. They're clear of Salva. It's Marsborough from Cargazi. Cargazi is fighting back. Still got a length and a half to find. And this huge prospect, Marsborough, wins the JCB Triumph Hurdle. What a promising horse. In second, Cargazi. In third, Salva. And they were clear of Nürburgring running on just ahead of Stormheart. Very pleased. I mean, this horse is so untypical of what a Triumph Hurdle horse is. He's the big three mile chaser to me. When he came into the yard and they told me it bought me a Triumph Hurdle horse, I'm looking at this fellow and I say, you know, it can't be right. And then we started to work him and um, we could see he gallops more than has speed. And like Danny had him caught for speed uh, coming around the last bend. And um, but Mark had said to me when he got down off him in Leprechaun the last day. Uh, this fella jumps and gallops. His intention today was to make the running, and, and Danny's intention was to make the running. So it shows how fast the pace was that neither could. They were fifth or sixth, fourth, fifth, sixth going around the whole way, and um, that's how fast the pace was in this race. But uh, and then when Danny went on, uh, I could see Mark still winding him up and going for one jump of the last. He got that jump and he just ground it out as Mark said he would. They race on now towards the final flight. Affordil quickening it up from Zenter in second place. Mr. Freedom, Lotus Sud on the right. King of Kingsfield with Media Naranka by your side from the back. Favoir coming through as well. Affordil from Lotus Sud and then Zenter out in the centre with Favoir. They're grouping together. Absurd making good progress. The white jacket getting ever closer. The Ebor winner as they race towards the last. Lotus Sud just the first to rise. Landed on all fours. Affordil on the near side. Then absurd out in the centre, Lotus Sud from Absurd. Absurd is getting there on the outside of Lotus Sud, head and head, and now Absurd, he asserts the Ebor winner wins the county hurdle. In second, Lotus Sud, who was worn down in the last 50 yards. Tight for third, Magical Zoe and Pied Piper. Tennant has just won the county on Absurd, and Willie Mullins just said, it'd be hard to beat that ride. He thinks it's the, going to be the ride of the week. It's certainly the archetypal win ride on the new course, I think, over hurdles. You had to be very cool, didn't you? Yeah, look, the ground was also obviously a huge worry, um, but he's a brilliant horse, isn't he? You know, to have done what he's done, travel the world, and you know, bad training performance either to pitch him up there in that form. As they run on towards the final flight, and the jukebox man has found plenty. The jukebox man has kicked three four lengths clear of Stella Story second, and he's got them at it here. In third place, then Dancing City. As they range down towards the final flight, it's the jukebox man for Harry Redknapp and trainer Ben Pauling. Keelan Woods is clear in the Albert Bartlett. Here it is, the last flight. The jukebox man got in a bit tight. Stella Story rather overjumped. Then in third, Dancing City as they race up the hill. And they're away then from Leckie Watson and Spread Boss Ted. The jukebox man is getting tired. He's beginning to empty. Stella Story is closing as they race up towards the line. Oh, he's been denied. Stella Story on the near side of the jukebox man. It'll go to the judge. Stella Story diving. A moment for any jockey to savour a first festival success for Sam Ewing in the Grade 1 Albert Bartlett on Stella Story. Many congratulations. Is it sinking in? Not really, to be honest. Um, look, fair play to everyone, to Gordon and Michael and Ayo Leary for putting me up. Um, he's a horse who's a good form all season. You know, he's only five lengths behind Slade Steel and the ground and trip. Everything was right up his street today. He jumped brilliant everywhere and Gallup tried very hard to the line. This was a race dominated from the front. Did they there was not really much pace on? Is that fair? Look, Keelan went. Keelan kind of did his own thing in front, and I was happy sitting a couple off him. You know, I was well in my comfort zone, and I was jumping brilliant everywhere. And only halfway up the run in, I thought I was going to get to him. To be honest. All oh, right. At the, at the last, I mean, he he didn't jump that one so well. And did you think you were you were cooked at that point? Look, there was there was nothing there, and I left him to it. And to be fair to him, he knew what he was doing. He came up, and he wanted to win. And did you you know at the line that you had got up? Yeah, I was I was 90% sure, but I had to look at the screen to be 100%. <laughs> you want to wait to hear for the number to be absolutely sure, don't exactly, you? Exactly, yeah. Oh, look, it's 
it's I'm delighted, but at the same time, it's, it's a big relief to get to finally ride a Cheltenham winner. Lompresse is going to lead them in in the Boodles Cheltenham Gold Cup. Lompresse by a length and a half, and the, the chasers are now at it. Galapanda Sean coming under pressure, Jerry Colomb, and then Jungle Boogie, Brave Man's Game, and Korak Rambler staying on as they now come down to the second half. Galapanda Sean rising just in front there from Lompresse, then Jerry Colomb. Here's Korak Rambler into fourth place, the national winner. But Je Galapanda Sean has struck for home again at Cheltenham. And a massive jump over the last. He leads by four lengths to Jerry Colomb, then Corat Rambler, and racing up the hill is Gallop Handershomp, just avoiding the loose horse by three or four lengths to Jerry Colomb. This is the champion, Gallop Handershomp, coming up the Cheltenham Hill and backs up in the Gold Cup. Gallop Handershomp, a dual Gold Cup winner from Jerry Colomb in second. Back in third, a bright run from Corrette Rambler staying on, Lompresse fading in fourth, Brave Man's Game and Jungle Boogie. Yes, this is the most important race, and it's extraordinary to think that so many years this race has eluded and frustrated him, and now he has got two dual winners of it, Album Photo and the very classic Gallopin de Champ. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, he's, he is classy, isn't he? Um, like Paul just jumped out, rode a race on him. He, he was never afraid to have him up there and in the van, you know, just be at the races. We were just afraid about his uh, first first couple of jumps. The last few years he's come here, he's ballooned them a little bit. And this year, Paul said, no, we'll get him out there, get him racing earlier on, and then settle him in and ride a race. That's what he's done. And apart from the loose horse, there wasn't much worry, was there? Well, that, I was yeah. going to say, but the loose horse was the issue, wasn't it? It, it was, but... Um, you know, you didn't know which way he was going to go, and I, I could see Paul thinking, I'd like to go his inside in case he runs off the track into the horse gate, into the stable yard gate. And he took a brave decision going uh, the other side, but um, it worked out in the end. And he was very brave over the last two fences, Paul was. He, he just sent him down to them and go on, son, you better jump these two, you know. And you, the, the different tactics to last time, as you said, he ballooned a little bit early, he was in yeah. behind horses, but yeah. you changed the way he was ridden from the Savile's chase when he was so yeah. impressive. Uh, the right? Savile, no, no, I mean, this year we've been all forward with him. Yes, since we got the beaten, yes, Yeah, the since we got beaten in um, Pontchastan and the John Durkin. And Paul was keen that he just rode him like a racehorse. Yes. And I could see the other way wasn't working last year. I didn't want him up. I, he was just too free, he was less less mature. Now he's way more mature, settling in his races, and much easier to ride, I think. And Paul has full confidence in, confidence in him. He has more confidence in him, I think, than I have, and I, I can see why he's obviously getting that sort of a feel from the saddle all along. And, um, you know, whereas I'm looking at visually and I'm thinking, is he doing too much when he's uh, getting into a battle too early? But I think he's just settled a lot. And he's the, the complete staying chaser now. He is, he is, and um, he gallops, he jumps. What more, you know, he stays, what more do you need? You know? How tremendously satisfying that must be. Yeah, to be honest, it, it feels different to all the other ones, to be honest. It, I, I can't really believe it. Um, I'm a bit lost for words. He's, just he pulled out every stop. Like, he went for, we went for reserves in the last part and that only the really, really good ones have, you know. And he had to be really brave, particularly to out. Exactly. So he was brave the whole way around for me. Um, you know, the loose one was interfering with us a bit and it was uh, messy, but, like, what he found up the straight in the back of the last, you know, you see so many horses get to the last and, and don't get up the hill. He got up there last year, but it was a different type of ride. We'd conserved everything and we'd done it the hard way this year. And with the loose horse, that was the complication. Were you wanting, if you could, to get on the inside of him? I was wanting to do a lot of things, to be honest. Um, I was wanting him to stay straight was the most important thing. Um, yeah, you, you, I don't even remember my thought process in it, to be honest, because all you're doing is uh, reacting uh, in, in the split second. So uh, it's, it's kind of instinct and look. Well, and the horse as well. You oh, have to have a without, horse with that class. Without doubt. Um, I mean, the incident with the horse, you know, the loose horse. But, um, yeah, as I say, we, we pulled out reserves there that only the very best have. They're coming to the second from home. Time leader, 
jumped to second last with a lead of two and a half lengths. Over, it's on the line in second. Sine Nomine is in third. They're pulling clear as they race up towards the 22nd and final fence. Time leader, tackled by, it's on the line on the inside. Sine Nomine with two and a half lengths to find. Now they're on the run in. On the far side, it's on the line. On the near side, Sine Nomine, the pride of Yorkshire, beginning to get up the there. Sine Nomine on the inside, it's on the line. Fights back, terrier-like, racing up towards the line. Sine Nomine has won the Fox Hunters. In second, it's on the line. Time leader, followed over by Billaway, Django and Shantou Fire. I mean, she's an incredibly brave mare, isn't she? She is. She was almost a bit brave down the back. Uh, one or two, she just she grabbed and she kept grabbing. And the next one, I was hoping would just just get her into the boards a bit, but she kept coming, kept coming. And I thought uh, we were just getting a little bit too brave, but but she was travelling nicely at the top of the hill and, and popped away down the hill and and uh, yeah, just a dream, just a dream. Look at that trophy over there. I mean, yeah. it's the most splendid trophy. I mean, yeah. I just never thought for a moment that we'd be in this position. So. Uh, mixing it here with these top jockeys you know watching Derek O'Connor yesterday you know just top top riders and just to have the name on there is just phenomenal now. Dino Blue tries to take aim in third closing now on the outside Allegri Davassi sticks to the inside rail Limerick Lace will lead by two lengths at the second run home Dino Blue is in second Marsh Red in third Allegri Davassi is in fourth and then on Steet racing down towards the final fence Keith Donahoe and Limerick Lace leads over the last in second Dino Blue who is still chasing and is gaining they've got another half hour long to go Limerick Lace or Dino Blue a one two for J.P. McManus, who will it be? Limerick Lace clinging on to the lead. Limerick Lace, Limerick Lace has won the Mrs. Power Powder, Baddy Power, Mayor's Chase, doing second Dino Blue, tight third, Marsh Wren, and then on the far side, Allegri de Vassi. You know, I had two seconds and a third this week, and I was thinking, oh, God, there are my chances gone. So to get a winner is brilliant. And she's got an entry in the Grand National. Do you know if there might be any plans to take her there? Yeah, look, obviously that's up to Frank and JP and uh, Gavin, but I know Gavin would be keen enough for her to go for it. And what, what do you think? Would she like it? I think she would. She's a brilliant jumper. Um, you know, she, she wouldn't want the ground to be too quick would be the only thing I'd say, but... She, she, she has the ability. Yeah, she, she certainly does. And I know you'll love the cross country, of course, why wouldn't you? But it's nice to get a winner outside of that race. Absolutely brilliant, yeah. And, you know, uh, that's kind of been something that I wanted to do for a while. You know, I've had plenty of seconds here in other races. So just to get a winner at the festival outside that, so people can think I can't just ride in the cross country. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody was thinking that, Keith. But many congratulations. I'm glad you've achieved that today. Well done. Thanks, Lydia. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. They're making the turn in, still well over a quarter of a mile to go. Waterford Whispers is the first in line. Now challenged towards the outside by K. de Bourbon. Into third position now, but being driven is no ordinary Joe. Towards the near side, Answer to Cave is still there. Staying on better days ahead towards the far side. O'Castle de Mott is next. And then What's Up Darling? And the others now are all tailed off as they race down towards the final flight. Waterford Whispers and Mike O'Connor have the lead towards the far side, better days ahead, and Danny Gilligan on the near side, K de Bourbon and Michael O'Sullivan over in fourth was answer to K. Now they're on the run in with a furlong to go. The leader, Waterford Whispers, taken on now and passed by better days ahead. Better days ahead goes on by a length. The Martin Pike will go to better days ahead. In second came Waterford Whispers, tight third between the rallying answer to K and on the near side, K de Bourbon. Yeah, Gordon, alongside me, well done. You look like you really enjoyed that. I absolutely got a big kick out of that, and I was only a winner this week. Um, to win the Martin Pipe race, first of all, you know, uh, he's my idol in life. Um, and Noel and Valerie Moore and the Beckham stood. They're sponsoring my yard. They're, they're one of my biggest supporters. Um, I'm very, very good friends with them. Um, the, the, sponsor, the sponsor of Mead Football, they're massive people of sport in Mead, and get to have their first Cheltenham winners is unbelievable. Uh, as I said, what to do for the yard is just, it's just unbelievable. They're um, the first Cheltenham winner. It's the That's first Cheltenham really? winner. But like, they, no, no people deserve it more. Like, they're putting so much money into the game. Um, and what to do like, for me and for, for me, football and for everyone, I'm absolutely yeah. delighted. Watch live.
Racing now on RacingTV.com.